In today's video, I'm going to give you a whole bunch of reasons why you should buy the Panasonic S5 over the Sony a7C, and then I'm going to reverse the tables and talk about why you should buy the Sony a7C over the Panasonic S5. Just so you know, this video is not sponsored. I've purchased everything I'm talking about in this video. So if you do find it helpful or useful, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, all that stuff. My name's Shane. I do camera reviews, tech reviews, and tutorials. Let's get into it. Before we keep going, I just want to let you know this video isn't aimed to create or continue a brand war debate. I couldn't care less which brand you prefer the most, and I don't really pick cameras based on brand. I pick them based on functionality and sometimes price as well, but that's not always a consideration. The reason I'm doing this video is both of these cameras fall in at roughly the same price point around the world. So I figure if you're looking for your first full frame mirrorless camera, you might be deciding on the Panasonic S5 or you might be deciding on the Sony a7C. So I'm here to help you decide which one is best for that particular task that you might be using it for. The first reason you pick the Panasonic S5 over the Sony a7C is if you're a filmmaker. If you work predominantly behind the camera, it's not even close that the Panasonic S5 is a much better camera. You get 10-bit codecs, which aren't available whatsoever on the Sony a7C. You get Cinema 4K or DCI 4K up to 60 frames per second, which is insane. You also get the ability to shoot in 422 10-bit. You can go external from the HDMI output to an Atmos Ninja, for example, and record up to 5.9K. So your options are completely different on the Panasonic S5. When it comes to the Sony a7C, it is really a point and click camera. In that regard, you do get 4K, but you don't get any 4K 50 or 60 frames per second. So if that's a deal breaker for you, then I would urge you to go for the S5. And the main reason is because of those 10-bit codecs, you can push the colors around a whole lot more and not get any weird sort of banding in the sky if it's a bright sunny day, for example. So the S5 is leagues ahead of it. Being able to get vector scopes and waveforms and all the tools that are associated with making films is a really great thing. Shutter angle, man, I can't live without it anymore. The second reason to go for the Panasonic S5 over the Sony a7C is the dual SD card slots. This gives you a sense of redundancy. So if you're recording something that's very important, like a wedding or if you travel overseas, for example, and you don't want to lose any footage, having a backup is an awesome option. It also allows you to put all the photos to one SD card slot and then all the video to the other, or you can basically mirror both of the SD card slots at the same time. So redundancy is a good thing, especially if you're doing an important shoot. The third reason to choose the Panasonic S5 comes down to ergonomics. This is not only true for the button and dial placement, but also when it comes to the grip. The grip is really important, especially if you're doing a lot of run and gun work where you're behind the camera doing handheld stuff all of the time. So Panasonic S5 is infinitely better in the hand. Now, if you've got really small hands, you might prefer the Sony a7C, but I always feel my knuckles hit the lens because the grip is so small. So for comfort and ergonomics, I'm giving the win easily to the Panasonic S5. The fourth reason to pick the S5 over the a7C is a real simple one, and that's that the LCD monitor and EVF are far superior on the Panasonic. Not only can I see the Panasonic LCD screen with polarized sunglasses on, which I can't do on the a7C, that totally sucks, you get a full interactive touch screen, so you can menu dive through the camera using two thumbs. You can use one on the hardware keys and one on the screen, for example, speeding up your workflow. So for me, the screen on the Panasonic S5 is light years ahead of the one on the Sony. Secondly, the EVF is positioned in the center and it looks far better, even though the specs aren't that different. So having it centered means you're not gonna smash your nose on the back of the camera, especially because of the way that it's sort of raised up and back a little bit from the body. At the end of the day, the touchscreen and the EVF are very underwhelming on the Sony a7C. And being that the EVF is pushed so far to the left, I'm forever smashing my nose on the back of the camera, maybe because I got a big snots. The fifth and final reason why you choose the Panasonic S5 over the Sony a7C is great in-body image stabilization. Now, this camera isn't as good as the Panasonic GH5 Mark II when it comes to the IBA system, but it's not far behind, which means you can get great stable shots straight out of camera without having to do any type of post-production. Now, if you do any type of vlogging and you do walk and talk shots, I would choose the Sony a7C. It captures gyroscopic data that can be turned into post-stabilization thanks to the Sony Catalyst Prepare and Catalyst Browse software. So if you don't mind introducing another step to your workflow, that would be better for vloggers. But as a straight up run and gun camera, the stabilization in the Panasonic S5 is far better 
than the in-body image stabilization on the a7c now with all that in mind let's talk a little bit about the sony a7c but i'm going to go to a different location let's hit the park and now we're over to the sony a7c and the five reasons why you should purchase this camera over the panasonic s5 the first being of course the amazing autofocus that Sony is known for. It's class leading and the autofocus system in the Sony a7C is as good as their higher end cameras like the Sony FX3. So face and eye tracking works with or without sunglasses. And if you're gonna be doing any type of fast action stuff either behind the camera or in front of it, and you need to rely on autofocus, this just works. It's in a class of its own and it's far better than the Panasonic contrast-based detection autofocus system. I should point out, however, though, for basic face tracking with the kit lens, the S5 does a decent job, and I use that the entirety of the clips you've just seen, but it ain't good, as good as Sony. Sony just get it right. So if this is important to you, go for the A7C. The second reason you'd purchase the Sony A7C over the Panasonic is, of course, the gyroscopic stabilization. Now, I said earlier that the Panasonic has a better IBIS system. It does, it's far better if you just wanna get out of camera results, but if you don't mind doing an additional step, the Catalyst Browse software really makes the stabilization something to be seen. You get gimbal-like stabilization through that process, so if you're gonna be doing any type of cinematic work or vlogging where you're doing a walk and talk, for example, the Sony a7C is the way to go if you can live with that additional step. Now, the longer the file is, <laughs> that you record the longer that process is going to take so it can be a little bit of a time consuming experience but it's worth it if you want the ultimate in stabilization it basically renders a gimbal useless the third reason you'd purchase the sony a7c over the panasonic s5 is for gimbal work now technically you don't even need a gimbal with this camera thanks to that catalyst browse software and that post stabilization but if you do choose to use one you don't need a big gimbal that's capable of a pretty heavy payload there's a few hundred grams difference between the body of the S5 and the body on the A7C. So just keep that in mind. If you do plan on buying a camera for a smaller gimbal, then you can definitely pair it with a small lens. So the Sony gets the win. The fourth reason to choose the Sony A7C over the Panasonic S5 is simplicity. I think Sony get it right when it comes to being able to turn the camera on and then hit record and get great results. You don't have to learn a whole lot about the camera just to use it and if that's important to you i think the sony is the far better choice the panasonic does have a lot more pro features and long term i think it's well worth learning how to use those features to get the best results but you'll get great results from the sony in the end it all comes down to the content and what it is you're producing over the features so as a run and gun camera the sony a7c would be my choice especially if you're just getting started before we get into this fifth and final point about why you should buy the sony over the Panasonic, I'm also gonna list a few things that either don't matter anymore or things that drive me nuts. And there's a few things about both of these cameras that kind of drive me crazy. So I'll let you know about that. But the fifth reason to buy the Sony is lens selection. You can get so many great affordable lenses for this system, whether it's primes or zooms. And you can also get great third party lenses from Tamron and Sigma, all of which will give you great autofocus. Now, the results with autofocus do vary depending on which lens you use, both in Panasonic and also in Sony. But generally speaking, the Sony lenses just work when it comes to autofocus. You can find something that will suit your budget a lot easier on the E mount than you can on the Panasonic L mount. So the win goes to the Sony. Let's cover some of the common ground between both of these cameras and the stuff that doesn't matter anymore. So straight out of camera, color science is great on the Sony. As you can see right now, I'm using the no picture profile, which is my personal favorite. I will say though, I don't really love S-Log3 on this camera. It can do some really weird things to the color of the image if you don't expose it properly. Whereas the Panasonic is a lot more forgiving with its V-Log. That said, however, both of the straight out of camera colors are just as good as each other. So it's up to you which one you like the best and if you can actually see a difference. But color science wise, it could go either way. The second thing that I love about both of these cameras is their audio preamps, which is something that can't be said for some of the older Sony cameras. These preamps on the Sony a7C sound great, the preamps on the Panasonic sound great. At the end of the day, both will be very usable with any type of wireless pack or external microphone. They both have a 3.5 millimeter input jack. The only big difference between both of these cameras is the S5 has a headphone out. So if that's important to you, Maybe the Panasonic's better in that regard, but in terms of just getting a nice, clean audio signal into the camera directly, 
both of these cameras are great. When it comes to slow motion, both of these cameras will get you great results. Both of them have their own S and Q option on the top, so you can customize and leave a preset on that option, then record in slow-mo, drop it onto the timeline, and you'll be good to go. It does all of that in camera. So as you drop it onto the timeline, you don't get audio, but you already get the clip at its slowest, which is fantastic. So it kind of saves you a little bit of time there. Not everyone will want to work in that type of workflow, but the S and Q mode for my particular needs works fine. I'll leave both of these cameras set to HD 100 frames per second, which is four times slower than 25p, and that's more than enough, and the results are nice and sharp and clear. Both of these cameras are right up there as three of the best, including the Fuji X-T4 when it comes to slow motion. That's got beautiful image quality. So do both of these. My only dual nitpick with both of these cameras is the micro HDMI port. Now, if you do plan on using these with an external monitor, the Panasonic gets the win just based on the fact the flippy screen will still give you all the touch functionality and it will operate while you're recording. While on the Sony a7C, it goes black and it has no touch functionality anyway. My biggest nitpick is the longevity of micro HDMI. It just doesn't stand the test of time like a full-size HDMI port. I would love to see all camera companies get rid of micro HDMI in place of a full-size HDMI port on all cameras. It's not even close. Just put good ones in there. So at the end of the day, which camera would I pick personally for my particular needs? Well, I picked them both for different reasons, but if I just had to buy one and I was sitting on the fence between the Panasonic and the Sony, it would come down to the kind of shooter I am. If I'm behind the camera predominantly, I'm taking the Panasonic. It's not even close. For my needs, that's a far better camera with more pro features. If I want something like this to get great results while I stand in a park next to a tree talking to YouTube, <laughs> then of course I would take the Sony. But you can still do that with the Panasonic. It just really depends on the autofocus performance for your particular needs. If you're gonna be doing a lot of this sort of stuff like you see other channels do that no one does in an actual video, then you know, go for the Sony. But if you just wanna stand here, both of these cameras will do the job, but I would trust the Sony far more. The only other consideration is lens selection. Now, Panasonic have released some prime lenses recently, and I've got my hands on their 50mm f1.8, and it's spectacular, but the autofocus isn't as reliable with that lens as it is with the kit lens that you've seen in this video. So yeah, there's sort of definitely some certain trade-offs with both of these camera systems. If you're more of a behind the camera guy, I would say go for the Panasonic. If you're gonna be doing a lot of these sort of walk and talk shots where you want either want the gyro stabilization or just really great autofocus, no matter which lens you put on, I would say go for the Sony. I hope this video has been helpful. Thanks for watching, catch you soon. See ya.